Thanks for being here and watching this talk. This is going to be a quick one. I've got one thing to talk about, which is Meta Flatpak. Um, I'm guessing everyone here knows what Yocto is, but maybe not everyone knows what Flatpak is. So let me figure out how to go down a slide. There we go. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Flatpak and uh, Flathub, which is a web service. Then I'm going to talk about the Meta Flatpak layer, which is a Yocto layer that integrates it with Yocto. If you're a Linux desktop user, then maybe you are familiar with Flatpak already, because even five or six years ago, we had a problem which some people would refer to as the Spotify problem, where companies wanted to produce apps that would run on Linux desktops in addition to Windows and Mac OS. But there's a practically infinite number of Linux distributions. And so they would support, at best, they'd support two or three mainstream distributions. They might just provide a Debian package, um, which is good for most users, but there's no way a company can support every Linux desktop, right? And Spotify, for example, I think only provided a Debian package. And if you were a Fedora user, you'd have to convert it. And it was a lot of work just to listen to music. So Flatpak is one of the efforts that tried to solve the, some of the issues around app distribution by looking at it in a different way. And fast forward to 2021, you now can easily install Spotify and a load of other closed and open source apps on your Linux desktop. And it more or less has achieved its goal of being desktop independent. So you can even install it in your custom Yocto-based operating system, which no, Spotify, for example, maybe aren't going to produce um, packages that support your distribution that you've made, but Flatpak gives you a way around that. There's a few other technologies in this space, AppImage and Snap being two of the bigger ones. There's definitely more. A couple of the key points about Flatpak is it has a very simplified distribution model. So the app is a binary blob, effectively. And then there's a runtime, which is an even bigger binary blob. And runtimes are interchangeable. So for example, there's a GNOME runtime, which contains a lot of libraries that are standard in GNOME. And then an app that's a GNOME app will build against the GNOME runtime. And so it doesn't have to ship the entire GNOME platform every time. However, an app which is not related to GNOME won't use the GNOME runtime. It'll use a different one. So you end up with a collection of runtimes and a collection of apps. And maybe you're thinking, if I have a load of runtimes, isn't that going to take up a lot of disk space? So the other key technological choice is that it uses OS tree, which is a way of distributing binaries, which deduplicates identical files. So if you have five runtimes, which are similar, and they share a lot of files, you only store each individual file once. So long story short, it's an application distribution mechanism. There are also elements of sandboxing, uh, which I'm not going to touch on here because I don't have time. Flatpak itself is a command line tool. Most people who are using desktops don't want to run command line tools every time they want to install an app. And what people look for these days is an app store. So Flatpak isn't tied to any particular app store, but there is one called Flathub. And it's grown pretty large. It has over a thousand apps. It has games, browsers, all kinds of things, free, closed, uh, desktop, mobile friendly, adaptive apps. And if you can get Flatpak working in your Yocto images, then you can run these apps. That's cool, right? Your distro is going to have to follow some standard free desktop APIs, like if you have a completely un new display manager that nobody else uses, then apps won't be able to talk to that. But as long as it looks and smells a bit like a Linux desktop, then you'll be able to put Flatpak into your image and maybe run some apps. How? By using the Meta Flatpak layer. So Meta Flatpak was created in 2016. And there's commits through for about a year from the original creators, which was Intel. Um, my employer CodeThink spent some time on this in 2021 and did some cleanups. And our goal was specifically related to automotive grade Linux. We wanted to see if it was possible to use Flatpak in there. 
and we haven't been able to do to push that forward as much as we'd like but we did get to the stage of a working prototype and we did make some big improvements to meta flat pack the caveat is it's still not got anyone who's paid full time to maintain it and so if you use it you're gonna have to contribute as well that's the fun of free software right so how do you do it it's a bit big layer these are the dependencies so it depends on a few flat pack depends on a few libraries from the gnome platform i think geobject retrospection and os tree i can't give you a number for exactly how much that pulls in but it pulls in a few packages from each of these layers and then you update your local conf file enable the flat pack package here we're enabling wayland wayland is the best way to use flat pack because it's designed to be secure and X11 was not. So if you install um, a trusted app on your X11 machine, that's fine. If you install an untrusted app and it contains a key logger, then X makes it trivial for it to log all your key presses and whatever else. So it's recommended to be used with Wayland. It does support X as well. And that's it. The only other thing to note, your root FS has to be fairly large because runtimes, runtimes can be around 500 megabytes to a gigabyte, depending what's in there. That's the trade-off of bundling a bunch of libraries matching exactly what the app was linked against, is that it's going to take up a bit more space. Nothing comes for free. How are we for time? Oh, very good. So let me show a brief demo. I don't know how well it's going to work playing YouTube into Zoom, but nothing much changes in this video, so hopefully that'll work. Here is a demo of the prototype we did for AGL, Automotive Grade Linux, a few months ago. And in this window, you can see my terminal where I'm manually running Flatpak and a QMU where I'm running the AGL home screen. And using the command line, I start an app which is not part of AGL. Which one do I start? I'm installing Fluffy Chat, which is some random Flutter based chat app that I got from Flathub. And it opens without any problems. The display works. Um, there's no work to integrate Flutter or anything like that because it's included in the runtime and communicates across the standards, uh, Wayland and Dbus protocols. And you can see me typing something there. I didn't spend much time making sure the app was useful, just showing that input works, app graphics work. Here's me installing a GNOME app, which is GTK4 based. So that's pulled a different runtime, which contains GTK4. And here's a to-do app, which again, very little effort to get that on the device. And again, the mouse works, although it's slightly off because it's running in QMU. Um, did I do another one? I don't think I did. So there's Flutter and GTK4 working on an image that doesn't, don't play any more videos, doesn't contain either of those libraries, but they've pulled them down using Flatpak runtimes. Okay, so that's everything on the topic of Flatpak, the application tool in Yocto, and how you can pull apps into your images. The second thing I'm going to talk about is taking things a big step further. So some people, mostly not people, some companies, let's say, might want to have their own ecosystem of apps, so completely independent from flat hub and independent from GNOME or KDE, whatever. And you might want to build a runtime specific to your device. Let's say you're a car manufacturer and you want to have people building apps for your car. You obviously build your IVI image with Yocto and you can turn that into a flat pack runtime and SDK, which app developers can then build apps against. Now, this is something I haven't, taken to completion. So I'm sure if you go down this road, it's going to take some effort. But the way you would do it is define a new image. And you're going to include here, I've included core image minimal, you would include whatever you're installing in your car, you'll disable building of any kind of file system. 
and then you inherit the flat pack image rules from meta flat pack these contain the rules needed to take the image and pull it into os tree add some metadata that's needed by Flatpak to recognize it as a runtime and nothing else. That's, that's how you build Flatpak runtimes and SDKs. Distributing them is gonna be left up to you. If you wanna make your own ecosystem of apps, you're gonna to have to think about how people are, how developers are gonna get the SDK, how users are gonna get the apps. It's all a very big fun problem to solve. But here's, the, here's where the starting point would be building a runtime. You take your image, strip out, you know, strip out the kernel and things like that, which you don't need in a, in a container runtime and use the flat pack image rules. So that's everything I wanted to say about meta flat pack. I think we've still got five or so minutes for questions if anyone's got any. And if not, I hope it was interesting. Awesome. Thanks so much. Yeah, Paul Barker has a question. Is Flatpak fully open source? I know with Snap, the repository server side is proprietary. That's a good question. Yes, it is. So the Flatpak command line tool is open source. And FlatHub itself, the app store is also open source. The front end is called Linux app front end or something like that. And the back end is... Um, somewhere on GitHub as well. So yeah, not only can you use free software to run the apps, you can also set up your own app store using the existing, um, what did I say, FlatHub code as well. It'll take some work, but it's all, it's all there on GitHub.